So next up, this was pretty interesting because there's been a lot of articles talking about the centralization of Bitcoin. Brad Garlinghouse being one of those who said that China, as far as miners, control everything. They control the whole, pretty much the whole Bitcoin uh, infrastructure and the, uh, uh, the Chinese, uh, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. So when I said this, I'm like, huh, oh, this is interesting. What do we got? Well, data from Glassnode uh, shows that a number of smaller Bitcoin holders and those holding coins on behalf of clients uh, keeps growing. Longtime Bitcoin holders known as, this was weird, longtime Bitcoin holders known as humpbacks and reference their status as the largest and oldest well investors in the space are not cashing out. So this was data from Glassnode that they pull from different wallets and uh, everything they can find from, the, from blockchain. And I'm just going to blow this up so you can actually see it. Let me really blow it up. Uh, yeah. So do you see right? Yeah. yeah. So you see right here on the right-hand side? Well, first of all, let's take a look here. So you got years. So 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to now, right? So over here, this big, huge gray area, these are all miners. Miners controlled everything back then. And there really was not a ton of exchanges except Mt. Gox, I guess. And uh, there wasn't really a bunch of, um, you know, big, huge whales. It was, all, it was all just the miners. And then as time went on, you had small and medium hodlers. And this is from here, and then large hodlers right here. And then you have this, this piece right here, which looks like humpbacks, or just like the older ones that just don't sell. My question here is, are these just people that don't sell? Or are these the people that just don't have access to their private keys anymore? Or they threw away their computers and these Bitcoin are just completely lost? I'm not for sure on that one, but I can tell you this. I would say, from all the data that I've seen over the, over the last couple of years, uh, that we've lost a minimum of 2 million worth of Bitcoin because people just throw it away or they lost their private keys or whatever or their mnemonic phrases. So I think a lot is being lost. So I don't know if, if those humpbacks play into that or not, but sure. But you can see here, now we have whales and you know those people are, yeah, they, they own a ton and they probably are trading a little bit. But the large or the small medium holders and large holders, there's still a big piece to that equation and then down here are the miners then this big piece of chunk are exchanges so when we talk about how like well you know miners they don't uh you know there's they, they control everything especially in china i just personally don't believe that and i've had um, many a uh, bitcoin miner on not on the show but in the comments we've gone back and forth now, like, look, I can just unplug at any time and go to any different mining pool. So I don't want to get in that argument, right? It's because it's like it never ends. It just keeps going, going, going. So I'm like, ah, whatever. But uh, from what I've, what I've heard from miners, they're like, look, I can just unplug and go to something else. And uh, if you think China's going to control me, they can't. They can control all other miners and all the other exchanges over there. Sure. And if they want to do something like crash the whole uh, in industry, uh, they can wipe out that one. Will it, will it wipe out Bitcoin? No. Put a big dent in it. But uh, I think it will recover. Uh, anyhow, I don't want even to get into that. It's just a big waste of time. So uh, that is what we got here. So let me X out of here and go down. So numbers alleviate fear that we talked about. But here were the articles. And you probably know more articles that are written here. I do too. But this is the ones that uh, stood out. One, this is on January 31st. Uh, Bloomberg used a report from research uh, token an anal analyst. From entity token analyst. Okay. The claim that Bitcoin's infrastructure is more centralized than ever before. And this was raising alarms about the security and, and viability of what is championed as a decentralized network. And before I get into Scott Melker, I just want to say this. You have to understand. Um, I don't know who's doing this. I don't know who's doing the actual articles. But you see all the institutions that are getting in, especially with what we just talked about with uh, MicroStrategy. If all these institutions are getting in, and I'm a multi-billion dollar company, and I want as much Bitcoin as MicroStrategy, or as Galaxy Digital, or whoever you want, you have to look around and go, how much are there? There's only 18 and a half million mined so far, and we've lost 2 million, so there's like 16 and a half million. Okay. Who else is here? These are all big people. I don't want to compete against all these people. I can't beat everybody, but what I can do is I can wind back time, and I can talk, to, reach out to my, to my friends at XYZ publication, or on this place, or on that place. And I can put out an article, it's not illegal, 
just to say, hey, look at this data, look at what's going on. And then you can start to see retail start to sell. And then, because if the small to medium hodlers have 40%, what do you think they want? They want to crash this market or they want to get an, enough FUD to make sure that you sell and you give it to, to these guys because they don't want to buy it at 150000 They want to buy it at 30000 25000 20000 So just be aware. Now, not financial advice, but I see how this could be a thing. Let me know what you think in the comment section, but that's just kind of how I see it. It uh, frightened me, but uh, who knows? So now let's get into uh, Scott Melker. He's the Wolf of All Streets on Twitter. Pretty, uh, pretty prominent figure in the Bitcoin community or cryptocurrency community. And he talks about this. He says, big buyers will sell eventually. Big buyers will sell eventually. And he says, such, such a scenario is a matter of if, not when, and the idea that institutions will hodl ad infinitum or infinity is a myth. Uh, Mike, he references micro, microstrategy and grayscale. And pretty much what he's saying here is like, look, they say they're never going to sell. He goes, but that's a myth. At some point, they're going to sell a little bit. He goes, regardless of all the reports servicing about the hedge funds exploring Bitcoin, it is our belief most are going to lock in profit at some point, whether they own uh, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or custody their own coins. So our answer is yes. Institutions will sell their Bitcoin. He wrote, it's reasonable to believe, though, that many companies and funds will add Bitcoin to their balance sheet in some denomination as an inflation hedge rather than a short-term profit opportunity, leaving some Bitcoin off the market for good. So, you have a wide range of people talking about this. Michael Saylor has been talking about Bitcoin and saying, look, I'm not going to sell it ever, ever. I'm going to keep it forever. All right. And then you've got Mass Mutual, you know, that uh, big older type of insurance company going, yeah, we're not going to sell it. Uh, but they didn't say like forever. And then you've got Galaxy Digital and uh, Grayscale. Who knows when, you know, they, they might do it. But again, Grayscale isn't just holding it by themselves. It goes to other people. Other people buy it, and they just hold it for them. That's why there's a premium for that. So I know when people talk to me, like, Rob, you should never sell any of your, of your, uh, of your crypto because it's just going to keep going to the moon, and it'll never stop, and it's going to infinity and beyond. And I'm like, I don't think that's true. Uh, I think Bitcoin's a pretty good play. Altcoins? Who knows? Who knows where BitTorrent is going to go? Or who knows where Tron is going to go? or EOS, or whatever else you think, you know? Like, do you think that all these institutions are like, you know what, I'm going to just uh, grab onto that and hold it. I'm not going to sell at any time, at any point. Really? So, I don't know about that. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. It's always interesting to read as I talk about these uh, institutions never selling. And then let's go on to our last snippet. <laughs> 